Hello and welcome to this Moodle video on using the database tool as part of your Moodle unit. What I'm going to do is show you a sort of a step-by-step -step process of how to build and create that database. And you could do it in a few different ways, but this is just one example uh, to create a resource area for you and your students to share. So once you're in, you uh, don't have any fields, so you need to basically define what areas students can interact with within the database. You could always start by choosing a predefined set. This actually is usually where you'd maybe import an old database uh, from other areas that have already been created. There are a few presets you may wish to check out as well though. I'm going to start this from scratch, so I'm going to go back up to the tab at the top and choose fields, where I'm going to choose the fields that can be added to for the database. Under create a new field at the bottom, I'm going to uh, do the drop down choose area and do text input. I'm going to give the field name as name of resource. So this will be the title uh, for the resource that the student is going to upload or add and contribute to the database. Click add and there it is created. I'm now going to choose URL at the bottom, so it may very well be that they want to add a web link. So I'm going to give this a name of web link of resource. I'm also going to select auto link the URL and open in a new window. Now you don't have to do the next phase, however I always like to use the force name for the link. And what this means is that the URL won't be the long string that you'd copy from uh, the actual URL bar at the top, which we'll get to in a minute, but it's just going to call it link to resource, so it's tidier and more manageable within the database. It may very well be that people are going to be uploading maybe photos or, or PDFs or Word documents, so I'm going to have a file area that allows them to upload their files. Once I've done that, I'll just click Add. And lastly, for this particular demonstration, I'm going to choose Checkbox. What this is going to allow me to do is create a categories uh, sort of section so that when someone uploads a website or a URL or a resource or a journal, that will then fit within certain areas. So it may very well be a journal on criminal psychology, so they could tick both criminology and psychology. However, it could be about psychology and science, so there'd be two options there. So you can create as many as you like for this sort of area. I'm just going to add these few in. And once you've done enough, and it's one per line as you can see, uh, select the add at the bottom. I now have the four fields that I'm, are going to make up my uh, database. As you can see, there are other options like date, uh, latitude and longitude if you want it to be a, a sort of a, a location on a map. There's the menu and the multi-menu, numbers, pictures and the radio button, which would allow you to select one option rather than the checkbox, which allows you to select multiple options. I'm now going to go to the Add Entry tab. And you can see there the uh, entry sort of structure for the database. So I'm going to choose the name of the resource. And I've got a link to a journal, which I'm going to copy. Go back to my database, and in the uh, web link of resource, just paste in that. As you can see, it's the full URL in there. So now under that category, uh, I will select some options, and I don't need to upload a file because it, it, I'm not taking the actual PDF. So I'd select all the options that it might sort of be categorized under, and then I could click Save and Add Another, or just Save and, and Continue. I'm now going to add a new entry that is done from a file upload, so I'm going to give it a name, uh, and it's going to be the educational learning leaflet I've created. I don't need to add a URL this time because it's it's not an, a, a separate URL, it is a file on my computer. So I'll click the icon at the top left and then choose Upload a File. It takes me to my list of documents 
and I'll choose quality management and upload this file and again I'll choose the categories that this might be under You can keep adding new entries uh, for as many as you need and the students can also have the same sort of flexibility to add to, uh, a few different types of uh, resource. And once you're done, uh, you just click save and view. Now when you do this, it says the single template is not yet defined. Now this is fairly easy to rectify. So what I'm going to do is click on templates. It automatically sends me to the single one and it actually creates it for me. I'll just click save and now if I go back to it, I'll be able to see the single viewed template uh, with all the information populating it. Click next and you'll go through all the different uh, resources, whether they're the PDF or the web, web links that I, I've created. If I do the list view, what it's doing is taking each individual one at the moment and making it just a very long list. It's not very tidy, um, even though it does have all of the information there. We'll look at in a minute the uh, way to set a template up to make the list view slightly more presentable and not just a sort of individual items in a very long list. Uh, but first I'm going to look at the search option. So you can search through, through the database and you can search by titles and keywords within the, that title. Uh, you can search for the actual web link itself or for a particular file and you can search by who has up, uploaded it. You can also search by category. So I'm going to search for everything that has education listed in it within the category area. And it brings up both of my uh, PDF documents. You can also search by more than one checkbox at a time. What you'll notice though is by searching education and science it brings up the items that are, have education in the title as well as science in the title. It doesn't do a sort of individual just education and science uh, as, as a collaborated uh, item. So the top one contained criminology and science, the bottom one only contained criminology but they both came up. It didn't uh, sort of look for only criminology and science based categories. You can export the entire database and it will do this as a CSV and you can choose the fields uh, to export. Be aware though that you can't export, export the files as part of this. So you can only export uh, the, the sort of basic text data that is made up of the database. Now I'm going to look at the list template view. And this is slightly more complicated to do and you may wish uh, to get help from uh, an online course developer to help create this item. If you're confident using uh, sort of the basic HTML functions, what I'm going to do is create a table using the uh, text input editor. I'm going to change my columns to 5 and rows to 1. Give it a border of 1 so you can see the lines. And I'm then going to the advanced tab and I'm going to change the border color uh, to black in this instance. However, you could do any of the other colors you see on screen. At the moment, it's not very tidy. It's, it's very small and, and not easy to enter. So I'm going to go into the slightly more advanced area of the HTML source editor. What I'm going to do, knowing that I've got five rows, is set the width up to be 100% of the screen that I have. And then in each sort of section of the table, I'm going to define that to be 20%. I'm just going to copy this. And everywhere that it has that TD, I'm going to paste in width equals 20%. So that they all have a uniform size and look tidy when uh, the information is presented to you and the students. I'm now going to put in the name of all the sort of columns that we're going to have. So the name of the re resource, uh, also the second one, which would be the web link, followed by the file as well as the category title. 
Now that obviously is only the four items that I had created. The last column I'm going to use for is going to be for editing and, and the actions options that I can uh, choose to have. Once you're happy with this, once you're happy with uh, the, the titles, click update and it will then make the, the uh, table appear and populated as part of the header. So this header, I'm going to copy, uh, again copy the HTML source, and I'm going to paste it in my repeated entry box. So the header will always look the same, the entry uh, sort of field is where it's going to pull up the information. At the moment it, it won't do that automatically, what I need to do is using these available tags on the left hand side, highlight the name of the resource and change it uh, to be part of the field structure. I'll go through each of these one by one and just change it to be the correct uh, sort of tag, correct field for it to pull up. Now edit, uh, you'll notice I've got actions so I could e edit it, delete it, approve it. Um, and if we scroll down in a second, what you'll see is I can also add in other information like the time and the user that added it. Added it. Once you're happy with this, scroll down to the very bottom. Uh, we don't need to include a footer. You can do, but we don't need to for the, the, these purposes, and click Save Template. So now when I view my list template, it's actually done in a nice laid out grid, and it's easier to see quickly rather than sort of scrolling through that large, sort of lots of single viewed resources. You notice that I've got the checkboxes at the end there because I chose to have the, the, the overall delete option. So I've got the cross to delete one resource, but the checkbox allows me to do uh, a, de a, sort of a bulk delete if that's what I needed to do. Thanks very much for watching this particular video.